Inside of this case right here is possibly one of the worst items I've ever reviewed on this channel. And those who like Angry Jeff, buckle up. This one's gonna get good. Today's video is brought to you by NordPass. These days, every service and every app require their own unique online credentials. Between banking, healthcare, shopping, education, work, hell, even my fridge, they all require their own online login. There's a lot to keep track of, both safely and securely. NordPass makes managing online passwords a breeze with their easy to use desktop and mobile applications, allowing you to store all of your passwords in one location that's easy to access across all of your devices. And thanks to NordPass's zero knowledge architecture, your passwords are encrypted before they ever reach their servers. What a novel idea. With our special deal, you can get two years of NordPass with one month free for a personal account by visiting nordpass.com craft or use code craft at checkout. But don't sleep on their business offerings either. Business accounts can get a three month free trial of NordPass by going to nordpass.com slash craft business with code craft business at registration. Again, that's code craft or code craft business. And thanks again to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. So I don't think this is gonna need much introduction, but we do need to talk quite a bit about what's inside. This is the Explo C1, a head-mounted display that showed up on Kickstarter a couple of months ago, and Explo reached out and asked for my 100% impartial review. No money changed hands. You know the drill as far as it goes with reviews. However, that is where the story starts to get a little interesting, but let's dive into the review first. So where did this headset come from? Well, its origin story is actually in Great Star Tools in Huntersville, North Carolina, supposedly. Uh, established in 1993, Great Star Tool Company is a world leading tool company. Uh, the products cover handheld tools, electric tools, pneumatic fastening tools, laser measuring tools, laser radar tool cabinets, industrial storage cabinets, industrial vacuum cleaners, etc. The company was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange in July of 2010, which tells you they're not exactly based in Huntersville, North Carolina. But there's nothing wrong with Chinese manufacturers, Chinese electronics companies. I mean, reviewing those products is kind of my bread and butter. Now, first and foremost, this is not meant to be a VR headset. This is a head-mounted display a la the Enreal Air, the Epson Moverio, and other similar headsets that I've reviewed in the past. This one, however, promises to be one of the lightest and most travel-friendly headsets. Although, I'll give it the lightest in that the headset itself is made out of pretty lightweight plastic, but then they strapped this aluminum bar to it, which is not removable, and, uh, adds significant bulk and isn't great as far as the overall comfort of the headset either. The way this works is it goes onto your face, extends out, and then just kind of clamps onto your head. Oh yeah, world of comfort. I don't know if, number one, did my voice change at all? You do sound slightly congested. Slightly congested? There's a reason for that. Uh, it's pinching on my nose so hard I actually feel ill. The noseway is so uncomfortable. It's not padded. It's hard plastic sitting right on the bridge of your nose. And then you have these aluminum spring bar mechanism that's then putting all that pressure right there and clamping your nose closed. It is not at all comfortable or enjoyable. And that's before we've even got to turning on the headset. So there are a couple features about this that I like. Number one, the IPD, the pupillary distance, is fully adjustable with a knob right here on the front. There's also two knobs underneath which allow you to set uh, diopters for each eye. So if you're a glasses wearer or you have a need to focus the headset, you can focus each individual eye. And that's pretty much where the good news ends. I don't know what display technology they're attempting to use in here, uh, but we will find out before the end of this video through one method or another. Uh, but the lenses that are in use here 
they remind me a lot of the lenses that are used on the Avagant Glyph, where they're more projector style lenses that are trying to, to focus the light directly into your eye. You get a decently bright image and uh, through the shade around your face, it is completely immersive. It's completely black inside of this display. But the edges of your vision on both sides are so distorted with so many God rays shooting out of it that really, if you take a 1080p image, you can only focus on the inner maybe third of that image. Everything else feels like it's covered in Vaseline. It is one of the worst headset images I've ever seen, and I've looked through a lot of different headsets. Now the specs that Explo gives this headset are mind-boggling on paper, but you can very quickly whittle your way through the bull Number one is a 900-inch cinematic screen. Uh, no. I, I don't care at what distance you're looking at this, it is not a 900-inch screen. They claim it might be a 90-inch screen further down in the comments, but all of their specs and stats that they're giving on the webpage are... Stay right here. It's like being in a movie theater. Right. If the movie theater was underwater, maybe. <laughs> uh, monocular 60 hertz refresh rate. What they're referring to there is, number one, the refresh rate, which is only 60 hertz. A little bit disappointing, but not necessarily out of line when it comes to head-mounted displays, not VR displays. 60 hertz, if this was a static image, would look fantastic. Monocular comes through the fact that they are not allowing you to do side-by-side -side 3D display. This is only a pancake single image, not a 3D image. 3,148 pixels per inch. I'm just going to call bull right out of the gate. Stereo sound VR experience. From where? There's no speakers on this unit anywhere. There is a three and a half millimeter audio jack for plugging in your own headphones, but these in and of themselves don't have audio. Now they do go into details about the IPD adjustment, interpupillary distance, and their diopter adjustment, which is anywhere from 56 to 72 millimeter pupillary distance and 1D to 5D diopter adjustment. And that does seem to be accurate. So I will give them props for that. And then finally, we're in one step comfortable. Um, we've already gone over that. I love that they make it very clear that they're not a VR headset. And then say VR like 90 times. With its built-in gyroscope, <clears throat> nine axis Shut up. freedom. Shut up. Yeah. Explo C1 can transform any console game or AAA computer game into a fully immersive virtual reality experience. <laughs> <laughs> While simultaneously saying in the comments of the Kickstarter that it is not a VR headset. There's not a gyroscope in here. There's not. This doesn't show up in Steam VR. This, what? <laughs> this is a head-mounted display, not a VR display. And they explicitly state this is not a VR headset. But yeah, they, they do revolutionary gaming device with its built-in gyroscope, off-axis tracking technology, and 9-axis, 3-degree of freedom sensor. That is so contradictory in and of itself. Nine axis implies depth motion. Uh, <laughs> six, uh, three degree of freedom is rotational. You have pitch, yaw, and, and rotation. Uh, nine axis is, is depth. That, that's where this motion comes into play. So you can't have a nine axis, three degree of freedom sensor. What? <laughs> You can transform any console game or AAA computer game. I do like that they separated console from actual AAA gaming. Like, props for that. <laughs> uh, you can transform any computer game into a fully immersive virtual reality experience. Not without six degree of freedom uh, tracking. There is no tracking. It, it does show a guy on the display trying to do the Mario Kart thing with the controller that it comes with. <laughs> But that's, that's all it really does. Immersive cinematic vision, crystal clear displays. Uh, oh, this is great because my experience is much more of the image on the left than the image on the right. I, I love that they gave us a side by side and it clearly shows that half the screen is just blurry as <laughs> By the way, have fun with the bleeps in this one. <laughs> Low latency, rapid response. Uh, I will say it did seem to be very low latency a la some other 
head-mounted displays that I've tried before. So I will give them some credit for, it's a fairly low latency display. I didn't notice any appreciable lag when playing, but again, I really couldn't wear this physically for more than about 20 minutes at a time because of this whole setup. If they removed this bar and even just gave me an, an adjustable elastic strap or something, number one, that would take your footprint of this device from that large to about that large, uh, making it vastly more portable and compact and would probably also drastically improve the comfort of this device. But I can only review what's in front of me. Spatialized sound immersive. Again, there's no audio on this device. But they got three sound effect modes, Jeff. There's a lot in here. Oh my God. Need to take a break? Just flip up the headset and let the top of the plastic rest against your forehead. Here, here's what they're suggesting. One of the selling features that they tried is it's easy to take on and off, right? Like that's all that's required. But they're saying if you need to take a break, you can just flip it up like that. Do you realize how much pressure there is on my forehead right now? <laughs> Look at this. This is what they're suggesting to take a break. Now, hold on, hold on the spring. Hold on. Is it going to pop? Oh no, I finally, finally, it went from here on my head to up here and oh. there it goes. <laughs> And now you got a big red mark on your forehead. That's amazing. <laughs> Need to take a break? Just balance this ABS plastic deep into your forehead. <laughs> Followed by wear it in one step, as if taking it off to take a break was just too much <laughs> work. <laughs> so included in the package, I will say it's a nicely presented package. You get a carrying case, you get the Explo C1 headset itself. You get a couple of different cable options, which actually is very nice to see. They both include the USB-C to C as well as the USB-C to HDMI. So you can plug this into pretty much any device you want. Nintendo Switch, gaming laptop, desktop, whatever. Uh, and then you also get this guy right here, which is their Explo gaming controller. Uh, and supposedly this is supposed to be for gaming on the go. So if you wanted to plug this into your cell phone and then, you know, connect to Parsec or play mobile games or something like that, you've got a controller that goes in the bag. You can take it with you. I have seen Mad Cats controllers with better construction and better accuracy. There's a reason Mad Cats went out of business. Right now, I wouldn't be shocked to find this in Walmart under the mobile gaming section for like 15 bucks. This is not a good controller. Not only is it not a good controller, the joysticks are light as all heck. The buttons manage to be both mushy in their response and both too sticky and firm to tap them appropriately. The triggers have almost no movement, but a pretty good feel to them. There, there's not a lot of travel, but they are nicely damped and have pretty good feedback overall. Those are horribly mushy shoulder buttons. I, I guarantee they're using rubber domes instead of switches under there. Start and select, or sorry, start and back for those who uh, were born after 2002. Uh, they're okay. That is the worst D-pad I've ever felt in my life. Red, did you ever try using this controller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me, Okay, so you can you can definitely feel left, right, up, down. The problem is if I try to roll, right. there's absolutely zero feedback in that. There's no additional press. We've put this off long enough. I think the headset is crap. Maybe some good ideas, maybe good implementation of diopter and IPD um, and good connectivity options out of the box with HDMI, USB-C, 1080p, 60 Hertz display. If it was better lenses, I'd probably be more on board. Um, but I have purposely not, not looked at the price on this. Am I gonna be happy or am I gonna be disappointed? <laughs> you, now we started this video with, I'm already pretty disappointed and I already know the price is gonna be worse than I think it is. So if this was coming out for $2.99, I'd say it definitely needs improvement, but I don't like that look. <laughs> Bro, 
if you're one of the first 50 backers on Kickstarter, mm. you can get 28% off of retail. Okay. And Fine. get everything that's on screen right now for $869. Shut up! <laughs> Bro, they want eleven ninety nine for retail. <laughs> Shut up! No! There's no way. And that's just for the first 50. <laughs> There's no way. I thought I was being generous at 300. If I paid 200 for this, I'd still probably be a little upset, but... Oh my god. $1,200? You can get a 5 Pro! You can buy three Unreal Airs and have a Mario Kart tournament in your house with everyone having their own display. What? <laughs> Act now, supplies are limited. <laughs> in case you were worried, they are fully funded, guys. How much were they asking for? $5,000. Oh, cool. So they sold at least five. <laughs> this feels like a grift. Uh, now, here's the deal. I would be hesitant to call this a, a fully fledged retail product. And, and I keep going back to like this whole mechanism. Um, I don't know who they tested ergonomics and fit and finish on, but this is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever strapped to my face. And I've put a lot of weird on my face. Boy, I hope that doesn't get taken out of context eventually. <laughs> it's definitely prototypey. Uh, oh wow. The rubber is already tearing in two different spots. I've used this maybe an hour and a half in total because I, I genuinely want to see head-mounted displays like this come to market because I think there is a market for things like this. Oh God, this is just glued on. And in fact, there it goes. So if we wanted to know the inner workings, that just pulls right off. All right. Okay, there we go. So some 3M adhesive is all that's holding that on. But here at the base, you can already see both of the, the nose eyelet bridges, they're already torn. This has been out of the box three times. Okay. Oh, jeez. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, that... Dude, careful with their $1,200 headset. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm done being... Look at this. I think it's just glued together. None of these are actually screw holes. They don't want you taking it apart, Perfect. which means we're going to take it apart. <laughs> Is this a sign that a company that makes hand tools maybe shouldn't... Maybe shouldn't delve into VR? No, because this is clearly a scam at $1,200. Now, what's funny is they went through the process of doing injection molded plastics, and it's a really good casting. And that's not cheap to do. And that's the only thing that keeps me from saying this is just an outright grift. Because there was some money that at least went into the shell of this thing. But they cheaped out at every possible moment, not to mention their entire thing of marketing BS. Let's uh, let's take a, an X-Acto and see if I can get in. Hey, if they hit their stretch goal of 50K, you can get some Sony earbuds. Rhett had provided me with a screen cap of, of a lot of their highlights. Stretch goal, $50,000. If they raise $50,000, they'll include a Sony MDR EX15 LP. Hold on. They'll include a set of Sony earbuds that are $9.99. No, this is a grift. It's a grift, it's totally a grift, which means I have no qualms about doing this. Yeah, there is no way they ever meant this product to come out. Now you said, while I'm doing this, you had an email follow-up from them because they may have screwed up along the way. They, they sent us two headsets, but you said there was something else. I, I am looking forward to what could possibly make me even more pissed off. For your upcoming review of my product, I would like to talk to you about our needs. Okay. Off to a great start. I, now, I will say, Companies asking us to cover certain aspects and well, no, that's that's not unheard of. They, they have marketing points they want to get forward and they want our opinions on aspects of those products. Asking for things to be covered is not out of the norm. Well, Jeff, the basic 
is to not publish negative content. No. <laughs> no. That is a direct quote. This is gonna make for a great video. <laughs> It's always telling when you get a product and there's definitely screw holes there and they're like, no, 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 glue that f shut. Isn't it weird that the headphone jack is like in the front too? Like, yeah. What a bad place I, uh, for it. Look, if I had any complaints about ergonomics, that's pretty low on the list. <laughs> it's not often that I can't find any redeeming qualities in a device. We're gonna get in here and see if there's a gyroscope in it. Hey, we're in. There we go. Wow, apparently, oh jeez. <laughs> they were concerned about the integrity of the nose because they fiberglass and JB welded the back side of it to give it a little bit more strength. Although they didn't fiberglass or they didn't weld over the rest of it. So just the edges, just the edges got some reinforcement. All right, our first look inside. There's the USB-C connection and the audio connection. That has a ribbon cable coming off. That has a little whoop coming out. Uh, we can see our focusing mechanism and our IPD mechanism. Those do look like pretty tiny displays. So I'll have to measure them to see if the uh, 3148 PPI comes into play. So far, I'm still doubtful on that. Yeah, you can see all the screw holes where they're supposed to like meld the two together and said they went, no, we're just gonna glue it. You can see how bad that plastic is too because my knife slipped momentarily and I dug like a quarter inch down into the top of it. Yeah, this is gonna last forever. Oh no, I just realized something. Great tool company is never gonna send me another VR headset. The basic is they don't want negative content. My audience is gonna love this one. <sighs> I mean, they reached their goal. Now again, Kickstarter, they're really under no obligation as a company to ship once they've been funded because the risk is on you, the consumer. So let this be a reminder that take heed with Kickstarters and with marketing materials and everything else because anyone who's ever wanted to bring a product to market, they obviously have the best product that this market segment has ever known ever. And you could be one of the exclusive few to live the dream of having a instant nasal congestion VR headset strapped to your face. Oh, sorry, not VR headset. It's all a risk and it's all on you. So will they end up shipping? They went through the process of custom PCBs and getting tooling for injection molding. It feels like a grift, but at the same time, like they did manage to at least ship me a review product. In fact, two of them. If they ask me to send one back, it's gonna be this one. At $1,200, I would expect, number one, not the cheapest ABS injection molding that you could ever possibly put into a consumer electronics product. But number two, at least some metal reinforcement on the inside for the components, because this is just crap inside. Now the cables are neatly routed and I don't really have any concerns about things coming loose, but at the same time, it's not necessarily the highest quality. But then again, they also mentioned the weight of this headset being one of the lightest, and they're not wrong, although they're still heavier than the Nreal Airs. They're trying to compare themselves to VR headsets while not being a VR headset, and they're trying to expel the benefits of a head-mounted display without having any of the benefits of a head-mounted display. They're this weird bastardized child that I'd expect to see out of a company five years ago trying to capture new market. There's two torque screws holding this whole thing in place. At this point, I'm positive this is not the review they had in mind. Aha! So there we have the guts of the Explo C1. If this is a gyroscope, I'm gonna have to eat a lot of words. <laughs> Not that it's been implemented in software or hardware or any kind of feature set, but they may actually have a gyro. Nope, ultrasonic. It's a microphone. No, there is a microphone built in. That's right. Okay, it's a microphone. Now on the top of this board, there is what looks like a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth receiver right here but there's no antenna populated to it. And obviously there's no software features that have been thrown at this. So maybe this was a, an attempt 
at some kind of connected augmented reality device that they eventually just said, ah, screw it, who can we sell this to? We just need to make our money back. Maybe that's what this is. But if that's what this is, this should have been like $200, not 12. I'm wondering if now I can get a better image if I can get the lenses in the right place without literally clamping all air going to my nose. Connecting what's left of the display to your computer is pretty simple. Just plug in the USB-C cable to the other end and you have a display. <laughs> Just connect both ends of the USB-C cable and off you go. Okay, so there we go. Okay, ironically enough, it's better like this. It's still not good though. Even outside of the housing, I cannot get these lenses to adjust to a point where I can see the entire display in one screen clearly. Uh, it's better, but the edges of the display are so incredibly fuzzy. Let's put it this way. If, if I close my right eye and only look at this in the left, the entire left side of the screen up until about maybe the last 20% to the right is crystal clear. And, but that last 20% blurs in a way that stretches and God rays out that is just beyond illegible. I can see that there's the clock down there if you have 2080 vision, it's like the optometrist setting it to the smallest setting and going, what do you mean you can't see those? It is so absolutely god awful blurry. It's impossible to make anything out. Now the problem is that's just my left eye. When I open my right eye, the opposite side of the screen is perfectly in focus and then gradually fades over to obscurity on the left. When you open both of your eyes, both sides of the image, converged into your eyes, now have a good section and a bad section, and they end up doing this with each other. And you really cannot make out any detail except in the dead center of the screen. And even the dead center of the screen is not tack sharp. All around, even if I were to 3D print my own custom fit VR goggle headset for this, this is just a terrible display and terrible optic setup that had no hope of working from the very beginning. So if you were thinking about getting an Explo C1 on Kickstarter, don't. Instead, take your money and maybe join the Patreon if you like reviews like this, or better yet, visit craftcomputing.store on May 1st, where we'll be launching a ton of new merch, including coasters, bottle openers, flasks, and a whole lot of different barware. So uh, stay tuned and you can directly support the channel and get some awesome swag to go with it. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. It's too bad the beer was subpar also. <laughs> wow, that was just bad. <laughs> $870, are you kidding me? <laughs>
It's actually a pretty muted hazy IPA. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan, uh, simply because the flavor profile that is there is from a flavor profile of hazy IPAs that has long since evolved into much, much better beers. What I mean by that is you have some of the godfathers of hazies. You have uh, uh, the Alchemist and uh, beers in that ilk that they kind of pioneered this flavor profile. And those were really good. They were very juicy, very citrus forward. Then hazies kind of went in this direction of like, how can we make it the most acidic citrus bomb possible? And you ended up with a bunch of hazy IPAs that no one wanted to drink more than four ounces of. I've been famous for repeating that line in reviews. This is somewhere in between that first progression of you go from the Alchemist to the New England IPA, Milkshake IPA, and it's just a muted version of the Alchemist with none of the benefits. Uh, while I could see this beer going very well with, with a pizza or some onion rings or something like that, it really needs that to complement it. And by itself, it's just not terrific. Still better than this headset, though.